today we interviewed Fouad Abdelaziz. He is a, a senior consulting principal with clinical mobility. We collaborate on a number of customers around CBRS technology and the cellular side of things that are that's different than Wi-Fi. What I hope that you're going to learn today is what's going on in the cellular industry. What are these changes that are underway? And seeing past those 5G ads that we see on TV that we think are going to solve world hunger. And more importantly, we're trying to boil this down to what does this mean to you, to all of us in healthcare? What should I be investing in? What should I not be investing in? And it's all about thinking out of the box, investigating all the innovation and alternatives that we could be employing in healthcare. Thank you for your time. Welcome to Healthcare IT Unplugged by Clinical Mobility. Today, we have the distinct honor of interviewing Fouad Abdelaziz. Uh, he's a personal friend of mine. I've worked with him for 15 years or so. Uh, a long time. Long, long time. And he's... Um, out of all the people I've met in, in my career, he's definitely uh, one of the sharpest. And I'm not saying that just because you're here and we're interviewing you. I, I, oh, I sought you out for this. So it's just to be clear, uh, innovator. Uh, he's been working on all of the, uh, this is where I met him, uh, working on all of the new advancements for, for cellular and where chipsets are, um, you know, development and, and all the innovation that's been into radios and how to apply it into the enterprise and like fast, excuse me, like the past 15 years, you've been working for all these innovative startups where, um, you know, solution providers trying to package a new way of, you know, whether it be small cell um, and like, like Flareon, you were, you guys really kind of put together the first uh, MIMO technology. Well, it was the foundation of, of 4G um, and, yeah. and LTE, essentially. I mean, that was really the... Uh, you know, at that time, the inflection of the market where trying to transition from, you know, how do you do you adapt the Internet to wireless or do you adapt wireless to handle the Internet? Um, nice. Unfortunately, a lot of the classical thinking in like the radio folks, it, they decided that the Internet should adapt to it. So if like you go way back in uh, in the early 2000s, basically, you have like. Um, um, like they, they had created um, like separate websites to run on mobile devices. And, you know, they really were not concerned about latency uh, because they viewed the radio resource or the air resource as the most valuable. And it still it is the more yeah, valuable argue. part because it, it, it cost a lot of money to do all that. Um, but the thinking was really not, you know, because they kind of, it's very easy when you're in the middle of it to kind of keep going down that path. It's easier when you're, well, it's better if you kind of take a step back and take a look at like, what am I trying to solve? And, and, and that was really the Flareon thinking at the time was yeah. we, need, we need the internet to be able to run on wireless and we can't adapt the internet. <laughs> it was and that's the, at the center of innovation. We don't ask ourselves that question enough is what's the problem? And that, how do we solve it? Yeah, that is the fundamental problem a lot with a lot of um, uh, just engineers in general. I mean, I, I no criticism of anybody. It's just um, because you're in the middle of it. So you, you almost don't want to, you kind of so immersed into it that you don't take a step back and say, whoa, 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 hold on. What are we trying to solve here? What are we solving? And you kind of tend to, um, kind of focus on things more on the technical side of it and completely ignoring the business and the user and how the users are going to be using it and what they're going to be doing. So we, I always try to um, kind of take that into account, which is that's why we get along with a lot of that stuff because yeah. the technology is one part of it, but how am I going to use this? You know, so yes, it's easy in an engineer to an engineer conversations are always they're always fun. They're always interesting because you kind of feed off of each other and, and all of that. But at some point, <laughs> that engineer has to talk to um, like the CFO or the financial person asking him to fund it. It has and, to pass, well, pass the, you know, has to be return on the investment. And, and I can guarantee you the first question from, from a, the financial person is like, tell me how is this going to help me save money? And Good transition. So what's the goal today? <clears throat> so by what I'd like to 
everybody to to learn from this conversation. I want I want everybody to learn a new perspective of from a cellular industry veteran with respect to the recent innovations around 5G and CBRS. We're hearing, you know, we were inundated with ads around 5G and CBRS is probably new for a lot of you, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit today. We've, we've talked about it certainly in, in previous episodes, but what is it and how 5G fits in there? What are the biggest challenges and what can you, the audience do to achieve greater success with mobility and healthcare by leveraging these? And really maybe the enterprise as a whole. Sure. I mean, um, that's well, just that's a, a little bit more about your background. I just want people to understand that you have a double E background and a master's from Columbia. And in, uh, in what was the, the degree? It's an operation research and financial engineering. That was kind of. <laughs> oh, Fawad hates this. Whenever I pull this out of him, he's like, yeah, 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 whatever. <laughs> Very humble man. Okay. Tell us a little bit more about some of those innovative aspects of that you've been involved in. Yeah, sure. <laughs> With let's go back to Flareon. You've yeah, yeah. No, I'll yeah, I'll start with Flareon. Sure. So with Flareon, one of the things we tried to do obviously is trying to adapt wireless to to kind of handle the internet, which was greatly successful. I mean, it would end up being acquired by Qualcomm, and Qualcomm pushed it as part of a lot of the innovation that were done there. They were incorporated into the three GPP and, and LTE advanced and and so on, right? So three GPP or the cellular industry standards body. It's kind of like the uh, Wi-Fi. Yeah, I'm sorry. If, yeah. yeah. Thanks for clarifying. I, I kind I'll of be doing that the... periodically <laughs> to you during this. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. You kind of get used to like using the terminology. It's almost talking to the mechanic and you're like, I have no idea what he just said. Uh, <laughs> The um, yeah, but but that was I mean after we did that, um, you know it was it was great and all of that and you know you start looking at other innovation and one of the you know this is I think where we started to converge a lot in in Spider Cloud right which is you know a lot of these in building solutions you know there's a, there's got to be a more cost effective way to for the mobile operators to deploy in building and increase capacity because now after you put data in everybody's hands they start using it right the you know the like the emergence of the iphone the emergence of a lot of this stuff it just people start consuming you know it used to be like ah oh, you measured the usage monthly usage and how many megs uh, a person uses well now it's <laughs> it's a uh, it's uh, it's a hell of a lot more i mean anybody under 30 it, they pretty much that's their primary device that's their tv you that's kids their, similar age uh, than I do. Uh, what, what when you look at their bill? I'm, I'm sure you're unlimited, like all of us, right? When you have kids, you almost have to because you could get that surprise I bill. But what's killed. your usage from your kids from a monthly oh, basis? Oh, it's. Uh, <clears throat> I used to get shocked, like a few years back, of how much they um, they use. Um, it's uh, now. I'm. It doesn't even phase me. I mean, one is because of the unlimited plans, obviously, because I don't have to yell at them and say, "Hey, wait, wait, wait! You're breaking the bank." I don't have to yeah. sit there and put limits on them. But I've actually watched it. You know, this is one of the things that you know, a lot of engineers kind of uh, um, don't do is they really should kind of pay attention and take a look at what the end users are. I mean, I use my kids, my nephews, uh, as kind of an example. I mean, I, I watched nephews visiting um, visiting their cousins, and it was like there's four teenagers laying on the couch, each one looking at their phone. This is how they social. talking to each other like and, this. Yeah, they and make each eye contact. Yeah, yeah, and each one is streaming whatever service. And I'm like, oh, that explains why these gigs of data usage a month out of each one of them, because even though I have like this 70, 80 inch screen TV, they're not looking at that. They're actually looking at the mobile device and streaming their own content and, yeah. you know, and doing like multitasking while they're doing this. So, and there's a reason so why I'm asking you this, because it's about usage models and how we leverage the, 100%. the, the mediums that we're talking about. And more importantly, how has that impacted 4G? And I'm using yeah. 4G on purpose. Because sure. you and I have talked about this a lot of track this back when before 5G was even a thing or when it was emerging, what was it that you told me? I'm like, Fawad, I mean, from your perspective, what are the big advancements in 5G? And you would talk about the problems with 4G. Sure. Yeah. I mean, so everybody looks at um, the, the, the more tangible thing that people see is the like the I guess the speedometer when you look at your car. 
It's like, mm -hmm. that's the more obvious thing because you're sitting behind the, the steering wheel. It's like, oh, the speedometer goes to 120. Now I sit in another car, the speedometer goes to 200. It, it's kind of very tangible, but the parts that you don't miss is like, okay, uh, the suspension, the transmission, the all the other stuff that kind of like are just as important as this. The, the unseen stuff. The unseen stuff. Like, so yeah, I mean, like, it's great if I, if my car can go that one, but if my tires are not balanced to, for that speed, it's, that speed is really almost useless. So this is where like a lot of the 4G to 5G transition, people look at the speed. Yeah, it comes at a cost of like a, a bandwidth, I mean, a spectrum bandwidth. Um, but that's not really the only important part. There's three aspects to it that are that are extremely important is the lower latency because a lot of the applications are, especially like gaming, interactive applications, um, AI <clears throat> and things like that, they really require- The real-time stuff. Latency. Yes, yeah. they, they really, I can't afford to have the mobile kind of go all the way to the core network hosting someplace at the mobile operator and come back that latency of let's say 30 milliseconds or or more it, it it might be okay for a lot of applications the minute you start going into a lot of these real-time applications and yep. and that require a, a lot better uh latency numbers like in the 10 milliseconds or even lower um so that's where 5g kind of comes in handy so latency, it's the first one, but what was like, what was the best case scenario with latency? If all things were good and if you had to go through a cellular network, what are In we talking 4G, about? In 4G, I mean, you you get like, just because over the air latency, you, you're you going to spend anywhere between 15 to 20 millisecond latency, plus you add the backhaul to it. So you're good. You're, I mean, you're not going to get any lower than like 30 milliseconds, right? So yeah, I you know, we, when we've tested this for certain applications with on certain projects, we've tried we tried to break the 40 millisecond range. We never could. Yeah, it's very hard to yeah, and that's part of it, right? So even if you so a lot of people started doing is they start doing like bringing the 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 mobile core, the the evolved packet core, which is the 4G core network on prems. Uh, on premises to kind of cut down on that. Um, so with that, that that would allow traffic to break out locally. Um, so it's might much like you know you have a radio in front of you and it connects right to the network without going back somewhere off site and back. Is that yeah, right? You're eliminating the backhaul cost, right? So you're eliminating you're eliminating the the backhaul latency cost that you would take. So I mean you end up shaving, let's say ten milliseconds. But you, again, at the end of the day, the air link. It was really, you know, it was kind of designed. I mean, it was a huge innovation between 3G to 4G, which you went from 300 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds, which is significant. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but, you know, now the applications kind of evolved. I mean, LTE has been around for what, 20 years almost. Yeah. So it, it's kind of like time for it. the applications and the use cases caught up to it. And now they they need that, that level of... Uh, that level, that level of uh, latency. Um, so latency is the first one. What are the other two? Latency, um, of course, uh, throughput, right? So there's more yes. of a chance to kind of use more bandwidth, more spectrum. And if you use more spectrum, you actually get a lot more, a lot more speed. Uh, but that's, it kind of depends on the use case. A lot of people think they, it's kind of a must have for to stream like 4K or 8K video. That's really not the case. I mean, because you, you better can have get darn away with... better, a lot better glasses than than I do to do, to have to see that on this screen. Yeah, yeah you're even that. You're still not going to use up. I mean, if that's the only use case scenario, you really don't need that much to kind of run video. Um, yeah, we're going to talk well, more about that later because that's sure. a that's a fascinating topic. But you know, five G is touting, hey, we're solving the speed dilemma, right? Yeah, so we solve I... the latency dilemma, speed dilemma. Yeah, so you're solving the the speed, the latency, and the other one is was really just kind of a, it's almost overlooked is the 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 ability to network slice. I mean, so in 4G, there's a lot of QoS, there's a lot of things you can kind of use to uh, to distinguish between streams and and all that, but it wasn't quite as detailed as what you would get with 5G, which is being able to, well, I might want to use it. Per application, I, I want to slice my network a little bit more granular than I would get with uh, with 4G. Right? So that's so, like dividing the intelligence of the base station of the radio that's connecting to all the mobile devices and and creating a kind of a virtual slice, which is really a time slice almost. I mean, it's not time because you can 
have a lot of things happening simultaneously, but it's kind of bandwidth yeah. reservation and quality yeah. assurance, like you said, for certain devices and device types and applications. Yeah, and the dynamic, by the way, is the key word there. I mean, obviously you don't want to sit there and just like, okay, I'm going to slice the network or subdivide it into like these constant um, buckets, but not if, what if I'm not using them? It's almost like building, you know how many times you're Yeah, you'd be wasted, to, right? Yeah. The HOV lane is empty and you're like, God damn it. Yeah, very- you go to a restaurant and it's <laughs> yeah. full, but there's three empty tables over there. Oh, no, those are reserved. I mean, just in case, yeah. A, yeah. you know, a high, a high priority QoS VIP client comes in. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and that's, it's just like, why not utilize them while, you know, just kind of leap it as a whole. It's almost like, I, I kind of always equate that the whole QoS thing. I always use the, you know, an example, you don't build roads for emergency vehicles kind of specifically, the lane is always there. You know, you kind of have a mechanism there where, which is the siren and the flashing lights, where when they have them, you kind of move out of the way. So they and dig bumpers if you really need them. Well, that too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it kind of kind of solves that, right? So where yeah. you you have a shared environment, then you know, and then you have a mechanism where you can, uh, if I need to, you know, take that bandwidth, I can do preemption and and kind of get my traffic through. I mean, again, a lot of the stuff kind of solved some of those some of those scenarios, and that's where really the transition to five G, you know, gives you. There's one more thing that you mentioned, and a little bit of background for everybody. Uh, you were d- working at Spider Cloud at the time, which was um, kind of a small cell innovative way to do, do um, LTE. And so you were working with all the major, um, a term we're probably gonna, you're probably going to hear a lot is MNOs, mobile network operators. So the, the large, your, your big, your big uh, cellular carrier companies. So you were dealing with them a lot. And um, uh, maybe you can speak a little bit more freely publicly because you're not longer, no longer there. No longer <laughs> working with, but you, would, you told me that, you know, the carriers, the MNOs really are in a pickle because the 4G network was pretty saturated. Tell, tell us a little more about that. Absolutely. I mean, I started saying what the use cases, right? So people are using, the, the devices got better, the technology got better. So Your kids, are sitting, my kids, everybody's done. Absolutely. Great. And they're indoor. Whenever you're indoor, that's your heavy, heavier, heavier usage kind of started to happen. Now, a lot of the mobile operators, when they design these networks, I mean, they design for for the most part, they can't really, the laws of physics are the laws of physics. There's only so much of the signal is going to penetrate inside the building. Yep. And as the building material kind of improves to, for efficiency and, and cooling. Yeah, these lead certified buildings, lead certified really buildings have like really good worst. insulation. And it yeah. turns out reflectivity from segment signals from penetrating, right? I, those are become like Faraday cages where you're kind of blocking the signal. So, I mean, on one hand, it's, it's, it's great because it's good for the environment. It's good for the econom- economies of running the building. But at the same time, they're horrible when it comes to kind of getting coverage from the outdoors into the in-building. Yeah. And then you have the users. I mean, are most, most of their use cases, they're all inside the building because you're sitting idle, right? Or you're working or you're doing something. You're st- you're, you're, you're not driving or you're not doing like something in the, like the, your data is really, this is where the time to use it. Um, you know, they, so the MNOs, the mobile operators wanted to solve that and they wanted to solve it in a, you know, like DAS is okay, but DAS really doesn't give you a lot of the capacity. It improves the, like, you know, if I'm going to make a phone call, sure, it does that. But the more, you know, I have a whole bunch of users trying to compete for that, I can't. I don't want to share that. And plus it's expensive. And, you know, the operators have to pay for backhaul, signal source, bring their own signal in. It's just very costly. So they were looking for alternatives. Yeah. That's where Spider Cloud, you know, we're trying to help them solve that by giving them a Wi-Fi like model where you put small cells, which each one you add, you're adding that much like a base station capacity in each small cell, but you lower the power on them. So you can kind of, uh, they call it, um, like <clears throat> mobile operators are used to that terminology in general. They usually do like a coverage model. Think of it like a big umbrella they use, you know, to try to cover the area first. The minute they start seeing a lot of congestion, they solve, they subdivide it, right? You know, it's kind of basically say, well, okay, I don't, instead of covering each tower, covering uh, a mile radius, 
I, I have so much capacity, so many people trying to use it, it's very dense area. I need to densify by splitting the, the cell into two or three or four to really handle more of the capacity. So, yeah, large public events, like you go to Super Bowl is coming up, right? And uh, you, I would expect to see uh, what they call cows sitting around wheels, these, you know, where they put up yes. all the time, these large outdoor venues. I mean, most oh, stadiums and- are designed pretty well that we don't have to keep bringing those in, but yeah. with the type of a very large crowds that you get with a, a really large event, they may actually still have to augment this and plan ahead for these events. A hundred percent. And also the profile of the user. I mean, it's not no longer, okay, can I make a phone call? I mean, these are like Snapchats or video mm-hmm. streaming or because obviously nobody wants to just simply talk to their friends. They want to show them where they are. So they're like streaming a video. So sending, receiving video and, and, and doing a lot. So the use case is just much, much um, higher, more bandwidth intensive, right? So, so, so anyway, back to the spider cloud thing with the mobile operators. I mean, we, we've kind of helped them, you know, like, okay, well, here's one way to do it. Um, what, you know, over time, what ended up happening is it's, um, you know, it, it's much better model than, than, um, than what they had in the past. And, and they liked the idea of, of, uh, of, uh, of that in ha- extra capacity. Now the the really the the bigger problem is they're not used to um, you know kind of working with a with an enterprise right and utilizing the network or sharing the network with the enterprise. That theme we're and, going to talk about quite a bit here because we're talking uh, about the clash of what's happening right now, big time. Yeah, and, and that's the collaboration between the enterprise and the mobile operator is really something that kind of it's been on that course. To, it needs to be done. You know, in the past, the when the mobile operator put a tower, I mean, it's you know, you you see them on the road, right? And I put up a tower. I have my, I put my own backhaul. My, I I spend billions of dollars for the spectrum. I kind of have my own environment. I can secure it. I can do all that. The minute you start going inside there, inside of a, a of a building, you know, now I have to like, okay, uh oh, what do I do? Do I use the same LAN infrastructure that the enterprise is using, or do I bring my own? Um, do I use my backhaul or do I not? Um, and historically, they've always used their own spectrum, which whenever they brought their own spectrum inside the building, they have to coordinate it with their macro network or the outdoor network of how, you know, because I'm using the same frequency over and over, you know, and the rule of thumb. In, in wireless, uh, in, in radios in general, if it's not your signal, it's an interferer because it's just think about it yeah. in, in that. It, so how do they get that spectrum? Like if you're a, oh, they, how do the carriers get <laughs> That's a billions of dollars. The, the FCC, you know, whenever a spectrum becomes available, they put up for auction, you know, and it's divided by market. Right. And like when I say market, like the New York City market, for example, it's not mm-hmm. necessarily just New York City, but it's like the surrounding uh, area, same San Francisco market and so on. Um, but they end up bidding on 10 or 20 megahertz spectrum that they would get there. Um, and it's billions of dollars they spent. Yeah. And which isn't a lot of spectrum if you're looking, if you're used to, you know, the Wi Fi world and even Bluetooth. I mean, we're talking like 75 megahertz that's unlicensed, but you, you have to share it. But this is like 20, 40 megahertz where they own it in that geo Correct. area, whatever. You they own this buy. slice. I mean, it's like a, a kind of like thinking of buying a, 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 like a vacation home versus a timeshare. <laughs> So that's really the kind of like the good, way to good. look at it. Obviously, if you're buying a timeshare, you're you're just buying a slice of it in or in like in the term of Wi-Fi. Um, but but yeah, but they're spending a lot of money on that spectrum. So it's extremely valuable. It's one of their one of the most valuable assets that they that they have, right? Agreed. So, so let's talk. You talked about small cell and you know, kind of the first version of moving away from a DAS and uh, in my opinion, uh, small cell represented something really, truly different it, it, it from the cost model and the and the maintenance model and what I could potentially leverage as as the enterprise um, by leveraging cellular technology. It was I haven't found many things in my career that were literally cheaper 
literally better and literally easier to deploy, right? You're like cheap, fast, or good. It's like, yeah. you know, pick two. This is like you get all three yeah. in a lot of ways. And, 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 and yeah, that's exactly, I mean, and that was the, I mean, like any technology or any, any thought process, it kind of, it evolves over time. I mean, like we knew that was at least at the, in the days when with Spider Cloud, we knew that the, this is a, like a problem that the mobile operators are facing and needs to be solved. So we were, I mean, so we were able to kind of like, okay, we'll develop the small cells. Let's use the spectrum more efficiently. And we can do a reuse factor of one, which basically in that small area, I can use the same 10 or 20 megahertz over and over. And, and that's because at that time we actually did a lot. Uh, I mean, that was the first time uh, SON, which is self-organizing networks, was was done because in the past and the manages the RF network, spectrum across all. Yeah, the it manages the, the interference and all of that, and make sure uh, the neighbors kind of you know you know obviously if I'm using the same frequency over and over, and again going back to the rule of thumb, if it's not my signal, it's an interference. You don't want to be transmitting uh, in in your neighbors like shouting over your neighbor essentially. Correct. So you kind of want to make sure. You have enough overlap to support handoff and as you move around but at the same time you don't want to be too deep into it where you're creating an interference to your neighbor and because you're screaming he's going to scream and everybody's going to start screaming to overcome that interference and, and of course it becomes like going to a party where you know you you're, you can't have a conversation with the person standing next to you because everybody's screaming yeah. um and uh but but anyway so that was that was really what we were trying to solve and what we kind of came to the conclusion it's the idea is great but the obstacles of like the like you know taking advantage of the infrastructure that the enterprise had uh was certainly problematic for the mobile operators uh it was still also problematic for them to kind of keep using the spectrum over and over. So, so we, this is where, you know, maybe transitioning to the whole like CVRS, right? Yeah, I so, want to transition into that, but I thought it was important to characterize the first movement away to this type of model that CVRS is, is adopting. So you, the small cell was really coordinating with carriers on the same spectrum. Mm -hmm. Now we're moving into CVRS. So what is CVRS and, and how does it different and yeah. maybe an evolution from small cell? Absolutely. So yeah, so small cells were obviously it was a great tool for the mobile operators to help them reduce costs and all that, but they really did not represent the partnership that is really needed between the mobile operator and the, and the enterprise. Yeah. And still the enterprise were completely locked out of using um, like 4G or... It wasn't you know, their network, it. right? So it'd be... It wasn't their network. So they really couldn't. I mean, they were relegated to like, I use Wi-Fi uh, or or not, because uh, the alternative for them to use uh, 3GPP, which is the, the 4G, 5G standard, they had to buy Spectrum, which I don't know how many enterprises can afford to spend billions of dollars in a market um, because- Zero. Yeah, zero. Even Unless if they, can they have a business it, model that it's gonna be, they're yeah, gonna be even a if they can, yeah. Even if they can afford it, I mean, they certainly don't want, I don't wanna buy the whole New York market. If I'm, even if I'm Amazon, which Why is a wealthy they? enough yeah. company, they they just needed it their warehouse, so they needed in their area. I don't want the whole market. I don't you want buy spectrum. You still have to go put radios up everywhere, right? You maintain the infrastructure. Yeah, you just yeah. need to. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so that's really where you know, and 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 again, there's there's a huge hunger from like for wireless technology and all of that. And basically the government does not, they keep looking at it and say, look, there's not enough spectrum. We can't satisfy that. So we need a sharing mechanism. So that was one of the things with the CBRS Alliance, which is citizen broadband um, um, solution, which is kind of like, how do we, how do we look? We kind of, the, 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 the industry looked at the way Wi-Fi works and, you know, so you had the two extremes. You had the Wi-Fi, which is kind of like a free-for-all. You can come up and use whatever you want to use. And, and essentially, um, if you claim it first, you claim it first. And, you know, it's incumbent on the radio, on the AP, on the access point to basically avoid colliding with, the, with its neighbors. And they usually do and, a horrible job at that, especially the consumer varieties. They check yeah. up on when they boot up. And, then they but, and that's, you know, how often, if you reset yours every day, sure, you might be able to avoid collision. That's one um, way to get my but, kids to go to bed at a certain time. Right? That'd be one way to, 
to. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so that was one of the extremes. The other extreme was like the spending billions of dollars and you kind of corner that 10 or 20 megahertz. So either one of them, you can see the flaws of this. Like this one, I have a lot of colliding with the neighbors. And the other one is I just don't have a big chunk of spectrum that I can use. Right? Yeah, so really so expensive and yeah. not a lot of spectrum. So yeah. it's it's really expensive and you have a still a finite resource. Correct. So CBRS, yeah. has that changed? Absolutely. So that was one of the key key things that needed to be done. We kind of needed a mechanism where um, we need a little bit more control over it. This is where the SAS or the, the spectrum allocation server, and that was part of it. We said, okay, let's take 150 megahertz of spectrum. That is a lot of spectrum. Which is a lot of spectrum because a mobile operator today in the US kind of uses that nationwide to cover the whole country, cover over 300 million subscribers yeah, around this, about the same amount of spectrum. So from a spectrum, from an efficiency perspective, it's still a lot of spectrum that could be yeah. used. Um, now the, the, the challenge was, okay, now we're gonna take it as a whole. Do we, like, how do we divide it in, in, a, in, a, in an equitable way and, and in a way where people can use it and feel like they got um, like the right, um, the, right, uh, uh, the right experience, right? It's almost like the same as when people get a, a bandwidth i you know in 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 an ip network typically i don't you know i don't sit there and divide like i have a, a gigahertz of service i don't sit there and say okay well i'm going to give sean this much and i give you know bob this a shared much. resource you share it's a shared resource i give it to you when you need it and i have a mechanism where i can do fairly uh share it between the users so it's kind of a similar concept that was so we kind of needed a um you know we'll keep the 150 megahertz of spectrum leave it as a whole and let's share it between between everybody that wants to use it and let's come up with a mechanism that will uh, be the arbiter of who uses it that's where the SAS comes in right so um, the SAS is all what it is it's just kind of think about it as like the the dynamic uh, DSCP or like, like the brain or... that that is is granting what ra what channels different radios should be operating at is that yeah. fair yeah exactly i mean it's if you're familiar with ip networks in general i mean before used to, people used to get static ip addresses to everything and you run out of resources like you're you're in you're out mm -hmm. and and then dhcp which is dynamic address allocation was was added to basically you create this pool and shared resource and you pull from that pool as you need it. When you're done with it, you kind of return it and it gets used by somebody else. So that's really the, the, the idea and the concept behind it. So that's, that's when it was, that was done. So we, we couldn't get the FCC to be the arbiter of that, to be the arbiter of that. So, so kind of, we yes. created uh, a couple of companies, Federated, Google, and and um, Comscope and there's a couple of other companies that. So I'm going to stop pause you for one second. So that's through the work that you've done with the what's known now as the Ongo Alliance and previously the CBRS Alliance. You've been very active in that. In Correct. That group. Yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to work for one of the founding members of the of the CBRS Alliance or the Ongo Alliance now, uh, which was Ruckus. It was Ruckus Wireless, and and Google was two of the founding members of the of that alliance, and that was one of the when we set the rules for a lot of that, um, and Federated, of course, was one of the like founding members, uh, and and that was the thing. We just basically it was a mechanism to act on behalf of the FCC because the FCC is like, I mean, they're used to issuing temporary license but they it's a paperwork think about it like they don't have a mechanism very, to do this you file eloquently, right yeah inefficient well you file a, a piece of paper you say i want to use the spectrum for two months you kind of get somebody to review it and this just think of taking that and dynamically doing it and without a lot of interviews so we need to put this mechanism in place to kind of handle all this dynamic way of doing it so CBRS, there's a dynamic way of managing this 175 megahertz of, of, of real estate. 150. But 150, I'm excuse me. Generous. 100, 150 meg. Yeah, 155 maybe. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes. 
Um, yeah. yeah, around 150 megabits. And <clears throat> it's this shared resource and it's a shared resource for everybody using it. So the SAS um, helps to manage this based on GPS location. And, you know, there's providers that it's all part of the system and how it works. But how else, what does it mean to a hospital or an enterprise that wants to deploy this? I mean, it, this sounds like it's very cellular. Yeah. I, I, well, that's, I mean, so that the, the, the mechanisms the, at the beginning, I mean, obviously you always had access to the small cell like we talked about earlier. Um, so that, that was great. The missing component was really more like getting access to like cellular, like spectrum, like non, like not Wi-Fi and kind of in a shared way. So that, that's really what the, the Ongo Alliance was trying to solve is like, how do we create the sharing mechanism where it's, it's fair for everybody. And Cause you create interference and problems, right? With well, with yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, you need a, you need somebody who can act as a referee. It's almost like you're playing a game. You really, I mean, the reason for the referee is to kind of, I mean, you can play with your friends and like you can call the game as much as you want, but to play professionally and all that, you really kind of need somebody who's a like a judge or an arbiter or somebody who's like, look, you get this much, you get this much and you're not using it, bring it back and so on. It's like, hey, you're transmitting too hot. I mean, you can set up a lot of the rules um, ahead of time, but you just want somebody to kind of keep an eye on it and making sure they're like, why do you need traffic cops, for example? Yeah. I mean, well, I just need to make sure the traffic keeps flowing, um, you know, correctly. And so that's we've, really got great, so we've got real estate now. So let's call that like layer one, that's yeah. your cabling. So now what's the technology that you use to operate on this sure. spectrum. Yeah, and this is where a lot of you, you hear a lot of people kind of like, it's kind of a mix and match, which uh, sometimes poor marketing or or uh, sometimes it's just, um, it just using the terminology loosely, it just kind of confuses everybody, especially if they're not used to like being in the, in the cellular uh, side or like anything else, right? I grab a, a, a uh, an attorney written document. Oh, I would love reading those. And read it. It's supposed to be English, but I can't, I can only comprehend so much of it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so a lot of the stuff is really more foundation and, 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 and pieces that will help these, these numbers. So we needed the radios. So the radios are there. There's a lot of rules in there with like FCC, radiation, staying under power, certification. So all that stuff has always been there and it's always been with the mobile operators. Yeah, that was the, already pre-existing. So this wasn't necessarily anything new at CBRS. No, there's really it's nothing, there's absolutely nothing new there. It's it's really the same, the same exact uh, technology. And like anything else, when, when I if I put it in building, I can't mo go more than one watt per radio transmission, so so on. So a lot of the rules were already, and the the technology does not change. We use the the four G technology, if you will. It just the what the Ongo Alliance and what Ongo gave you and CBRS gave you is spectrum that available for an enterprise to use. Remember we talked about like. The spectrum before used to be auctioned off. Mobile operators paid billions of dollars for it. They kind of controlled it. This is really just to make it more democratizing the spectrum so that anybody in any enterprise to use. That's why they actually refer to it as the innovation band, uh, because you know, if you have three companies, and no, no, no insult to the mobile operators, it's just when you have three people trying to innovate is totally different between like 3 million <laughs> different companies yep. trying to innovate. You actually get way more ideas and all, all that like kind of coming up with, with different solutions and, and things like that. So the more you open it up to creative ideas, the more ideas you get, right? Now, now they're not all gonna be great. <laughs> and they're yep. not all gonna be garbage. So it's kind of like you actually get a pool, the pool just expanded significantly for you to, to innovate and create. And as long as you have a mechanism where you can manage the interference and make sure that everybody has access to it, which is really what the SAS and the Ongo Alliance and CBRS is giving you. So it's not really defining what technology, like, like not defining a new technology because it's still 4G or 5G or like governed by the 3GPP organization, which is the organization that, that governs cellular standards. And you're not changing like the radios because the radios are being built in the same way that they were built before for small for small cells. 
now you're just kind of really putting the whole thing together with and giving enterprises access to spectrum and frequency that they would not have had access to in the past. So, yeah. so that's really the big, the big, the significant difference or the significance um, of CBRS to the market. I'll make a statement and you correct me if um, details here. <clears throat> CBRS to me is a way to take the cellular technology that we use every day as consumers and to deploy it in the enterprise in a way to where you now control it. And you could deploy your own mobile devices, put your own SIM card in it and have it connect to your network. And there's some other things around maybe about roaming and the neutral host, but starting off today, CBRS, uh, tell me if you agree, disagree on some of these details and maybe expand on it too, but it's a way for, so we all experience cellular technology. It's, it's superior in, in several ways to Wi-Fi. Um, not in every way, but in, in several yeah. ways. But it, <clears throat> you now have access to it as an enterprise. Yes. And that's exactly the point. I mean, it's, it's and, and by the way, one, one clarification. I mean, it's so, so really CBRS and, and cellular technology is not designed to replace Wi-Fi. It's really more of a, I think, the well. coexistence and, and the augmentation of each other. You know, <clears throat> like there's a lot of great things that Wi-Fi does great. And there's a lot of great things that LTE does Agreed. great. This is where we go back to the use case, right? What's what's your use case? What are you trying to do? I mean, Thank you. again, you have to use it for base what's, what's it built for. Now, it, Wi-Fi is not built for mobility, right? I mean, it's built to kind of eliminate the wiring to the office. I mean, it wasn't really built for that. I mean, it was it was built more for that. So, so if you have like, you know, people kind of driving around and you have to make before break connections, I mean, cellular is built for that. Because that's you do that all the time. It's like you're driving your car. You don't feel when you hand it off and when you moved around. Now, there's a lot of stuff that's happening behind the scenes that that is moving you from from one place to another. Um, you don't feel it because the that's built into the technology. Yeah, but it was designed so, from. I like to tell people cellular technology, or rather LTE, is the actual protocol. It was when I compare the two. Um, and how they were architected. It was very clear that LTE was designed from the ground up with the notion of roaming is like one of the core requirements. Whereas Wi-Fi, it was designed to be an extension of your wired LAN. And there was, there's was there been a million amendments to Wi-Fi. You hear yes. it as the alphabet soup of 802.11. You know, in this case, it's R and K. Those are the two big amendments to improve roaming with Wi-Fi because it, it frankly stunk. It was horrible, especially when you employ enterprise security and what that what that experience is when you're roaming between access points. So they've certainly done a, done a lot to improve it, but it's always been this band-aid. Whereas cellular, the, it's it's really elegant. And with LTE, I should say, it's really elegant. So now we've got, and, and in healthcare, or in, in not the only environment, you know, there's manufacturing, there's there's um, you know warehousing, and where you're highly mobile workers. That is the norm. They're not sedentary sitting at a desk like I am right yeah. now. I mean, they're constantly in the move. So roaming has to be done right. And I'll tell you, you know, you and I share about this all the time, for, but for those of you listening, most of what we're solving when we go into fixed Wi-Fi networks, it's to solve roaming. And there's a lot of things you have to do to solve it. Maybe there's coverage issue. Maybe there's placement issues. To cover the, and many times there's protocol issues. And, and then oftentimes we have to bolster security, which makes um, the re a little harder to do that. So there's a lot of engineering. You know, I, I use the term, it's a science project a lot of times, because it literally is, I, I think in many, many ways. Whereas cellular, yeah, gosh, a lot of that stuff's kind of figured out for you uh, right out of the box. Yeah, I mean, um, like, like, like simplifying. Describe, it, of course. I mean, if you have a creative enough person, you can kind of cope, overcome some of the obstacles. You can take Wi-Fi and kind of bend it and shape it to do yeah. You know, to get closer to the mobility because it's fundamentally is not built for a lot of a lot of the mobility side of it. But 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 I anyway, I kind of wanted to get into the point of, you know, people mistakenly a lot of the times they think it's like, oh, this is going to replace my wife. I'm like, well, not necessarily. I mean, it's you know, if it you know, you have to look at the use case and and what applications you're trying to solve. Look at it, Wi-Fi. It might change your strategy with, uh, about how you yeah. might deploy Wi-Fi yeah. and or yeah. um, CBRS. 
or even yeah. whether you do a DAS. Tell me about you know the potential future, um, what's being worked on right now within the CBRS space about um, dealing with indoor cellular augmentation. Like I for your Verizon, yeah. T-Mobile, whatever coverage. Sure. sure. I was looking. I mean, at the beginning, a lot of these enterprises. So you like you describe it. There's a there's. It's easy enough. You you've heard the term private. <laughs> private LTE or private 5G networks. I mean, those are, you don't need a mobile operator. Now that you have access to the radios, you have access to the, to the spectrum. And, and a lot of these companies are getting better as far as, you know, because remember in the past, these, the guys who make the SIMs, the guys who make the radios, the guys who make the core, core networks, they were, you know, their only customer was the mobile operator. So they always looked at it as the scale of like, are you going to buy 10 million SIMs from me? Because that's, I mean, that, and that was the type of company that's all they that cared available. about. Yeah. yeah. Well, now with the with the spectrum being available, and it kind of expanded the market for a lot of. So there's a lot of innovation, and a lot of a lot of companies are coming out of the like I don't want to come out of the woodwork, but but they're all looking at like, hey, I can solve this for an enterprise. Oh, I you know LTEs might be scary to a lot of these enterprises because they're not used to it, right? So it's something. Yeah, they they have developed. Uh, IP, they have like LAN, Wi-Fi, and and that and servers and some of that technology. It's just like they're like, oh my god, this is going to be scary. I have to learn yet a new uh, acronym, a new acronyms, new technology, and new everything. And yeah. this is where a lot of the a lot of the innovation is really happening. Is like, okay, well, I'm going to take this. I'm going to you know, a lot of companies are looking at uh, how do I take this and boil it into something that an enterprise would look at and would view, make it look and feel like closer to Wi-Fi. I mean, this is one of the things we did when I was with the, my days with Ruckus. And that was really one of the main reasons I joined there was I looked at it as, and said, look, the only way this small cell, especially CBRS is gonna be deployed, it needs to, you know, a lot of these enterprises are used to Wi-Fi. You know, they used to how to deploy Wi-Fi and how to operate it and all that. I don't. I don't necessarily need all these parameters to sit there and adjust them and and kind of give every, every knob. You don't need all the dirt knobs, yeah. No, I don't need all the knobs. I mean, actually, in Wi-Fi, you have that, you know, if you look at it. But there, there's a difference with you. In an enterprise Wi-Fi, you actually have a lot of knobs. Compare that to the home. I mean, they Wi-Fi kind of figured that out, like, right, where... Um, if you buy a Linksys or a Netgear, most people are just like, I have no idea what that is. I plug it in, it works. And, yeah. and that's, and that's the mentality. A lot of these innovations going in that direction. So a lot of these private networks are pretty much self-contained. You can, you can go to Amazon and buy an, a core <laughs> for like a thousand dollars. Basically you can buy a core, yeah, you can an buy EPC sims. core, the core yeah. that runs that you can just buy radios and plug them in or have them home back there and run your own. Exactly. CBRS I mean, network. if you have, if you have a, like a robust IT team, that's, you know, you can literally put a lot of the stuff together, but there's a lot of companies are looking for like to bundle it and make it easier. So, I mean, that solves a lot of the private use case scenario, but I think where you're going to is like, okay, now that, now that I have this private network and I have this, this uh, you know, LTE or, and later on 5G network, uh, how am I going to, can I collaborate with the mobile operators? So the mobile operators are looking at it. It's like, this is great. <laughs> you know, it's like, this is like the enterprises are, you know, are deploying these in building networks. They want to use it for the private use case scenario. Well, the radio radios are there. They speak our language. Essentially, they're not using my spectrum. They're using kind of like this shared spectrum. Yeah. Well, this is a win for a win. all sides. Tell you me know? about the economics of that. Like, well, how has that been with within the MNOs, uh, the large carriers again? Um, they used to pony up a lot of money to help organizations deploy cellular indoors, and it was through distributed yeah. antenna systems or DAS. And uh, how has that changed in terms of their funding model? Or are they still yeah. doing that? Well, it, it depends if you're the fortunate, if you're like a stadium, an arena or, or like a public space like that. So certainly still, still that goes on like the, the distributed antenna system, which is something that the mobile operator is funding or somebody else's or somebody's funding, but there's a shared cost a little bit. But the, if you kind of look at like when we first started this conversation saying, all right, well, um, 
the mobile operators went away to kind of an unlimited use case scenarios and yeah. all that. So I pay them their $50 a line for this, but yet they still have to spend, like I think just on the C-band um, spectrum that the last auction that was bid on, I mean, they spent like over 85 billion on that spectrum. Billion with a B. Yeah. Billion, yes, billions. And that's before they even put the radios, before they- Yeah, they still have to go deploy things and pay yeah. rent for every place they put it. And they put backhaul. <clears throat> For every yes. place I put it, incredibly expensive. Yes. So, I mean, and you're still paying them the same 50 bucks, right? So your phone says 5G, 4G, you don't care. You're like, look, I'm just going to use it. I'll give you the 40 or $50 unlimited everything. Well, where is the revenues coming from? They can't afford to keep augmenting. You know, they'll, like I said, they'll go into like these, like a train station, a stadium, an sure. arena and fund, fund that stuff and, and maybe work with some, like with the building to kind of get that because it still costs them a lot of money <clears throat> to put equipment, use their spectrum and all of that. So now they're looking at this, well, there is a way for us to share. Now they've kind of tried some of the stuff with Wi-Fi offload where, okay, we'll mm -hmm. let the user do Wi-Fi calling. It's the same concept, right? So you know, where, but whenever they did Wi Fi calling, they almost, I don't want to say lost control, but they're, you know, it's like, okay, well, if somebody dials a 911, it's kind of like the best effort. And yeah, the MNOs are absolute control freaks. They want to yeah. control every aspect of that connection. Yeah. <clears throat> and I, and I kind of, I can see where they're coming from. They want to, because in the, the past, of, they almost had to. Yeah. I mean, they've always had the control and as well as, you know, at the end of the day, when like my phone says Team over Verizon or at t that's the logo on it. If it doesn't work, I'm not yelling at the venue owner. I'm, I'm yelling at Verizon right, or, right. or at t right? So saying, oh, their coverage sucks. That's not what, I mean, so that's for that reason, they kind of like, they're very hesitant and they're very careful of where they would run the network, right? At the end of the day, they view it as it's their name that's being broadcast on the on this phone yeah. so so that's that's something that they they kind of cognizant of and worried about so, so combined, would i be able to roam onto a cbrs network uh, so With that's all that stuff is being kind of like a lot of the details are are kind of being worked on between the alliance and the mobile operators because at the end of the day that partnership is really something that's beneficial for everybody right where if the mobile operator can can offload a lot of that stuff. Look, the enterprises are great at doing their a lot of in-building coverage. And if the enterprise is, or the venue owners or whomever is doing this, you know, I put Wi-Fi in the building, um, this is no different. If I can do it at the same cost basis yeah. and, and, and then I can partner with the mobile operator saying, just like any other Wi-Fi network, right? You, you can advertise multiple on the same radio if I can yeah, it's one tower, the same hardware. but multiple operators yes. are servicing off of that. Yeah, it's just like a VLAN or advertise like yes. different PLMN ID, SSIDs, like in Wi-Fi. It's this literally the same concept. Now, the, the details that's being worked on is like, um, how do you guarantee their security, which is, you know, a lot of this stuff, there's a lot of encryption and, and things like that. But that's, it, it's extremely close to to kind of like final like details like dotting the eyes and it's exciting so yes yeah. i mean yeah. it really sounds like uh this roaming you know through these uh mock and gateways as you've educated yeah. me about uh multiple operator carrier network something like that yeah. yeah it um would allow let's say you as a hospital as the cio you know you could buy a cbrs network like you buy this equipment and you would, it would come up using the spectrum allocation service, give you the right channels to operate on. And then with this mock and gateway uh, and through a partnership with the carriers, there's gonna probably be an intermediary that's, that stands in between to facilitate that. So the hospitals don't, or venue owners don't have to, you know, form their own relationships. It sounds like, I, and then you, the carriers, uh, so let's say visitors of the hospital um, would be able to, Keep their stay on their cellular network, maybe run their Wi Fi, but you know, they could stay right on the cellular network and get good, solid indoor coverage, right? Yeah, 100%. I mean, again, it's a win win for all. I mean, I, I've actually I've had these discussions in my in my, um, my, my ruckus days where we would go talk to hotels, hospitals, universities, venue owners. 
um, and 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 like the 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 real estate owners are the the very very interesting bunch. Um, it's almost like the way they look at uh, they look at cellular coverage as the fourth utility. You know, I can't rent my space. Smart. If I don't give, if you know, obviously, if, if if you're a business owner that you want to rent like a real estate um, <clears throat> office space, you go in. It's like okay, of course I have power, I have, you know, mm -hmm. water, I have toilets, I have you know whatever heating, cooling, all that the utility. If your phone doesn't work, it it's almost it's a deal breaker, right? Yeah. Because if you think about it, you're going to be spending whether it's an apartment complex or uh, and we talked about like how the buildings are Done. Faraday cages now. They're like building materials are improving, especially the newer, the worst from an from an outdoor cover, yeah. outdoor in coverage. A window so, you can see through may not actually pass an RF signal very well. I, and a hundred percent. I mean, it's like it's a beautiful building, nice glass, but that thing is like lead and it's, it's like blocks every RF signal. That's from a metal coding. oxide coating. Yes. Yes. So it's 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 great for the environment, but it's horrible from a cellular coverage. Now, if you think about it, whether it's an apartment or an office, you're going to be spending eight to ten hours a day in that space. Your phone doesn't work. I, I I've actually I can't <laughs> I can't walk to my car without my phone just in case because these like you become attached to to those things. It's like this is basically that's your phone your your meeting organizer you're everything i mean it's a fact if you're in one of those let's say a retail venue it's how you might even be paying for your or for your transaction 100%. how you yeah, might I mean, be looking up and maybe comparison shopping while you're there uh you know figuring out indoor navigation that gets you figure where in this crazy mall you know to how to get there and that's where everything's going right absolutely yeah. so it is that's a great way that they look at it so, yeah, yeah we, we, so moving on here um sure. So CBRS sounds pretty fascinating. Um, you said something about the economics, and I just want to hit a point here. For the same $50 a month that they keep charging us, and we're using that term loosely, of course, but it's just, you know, fixed amount of income. They're not, um, so give me, give me I, I, I have stolen this phrase from you and used it many times because it really hit home for me. So you gave the scenario of like you're walking into a, to a carrier's, um, retail store with a big old bag of money. It, it, tell me how the story goes. Yeah, I mean, so, and that's is one of the things, I mean, that's is like the innovation part or <clears throat> as far as this, I mean, so what happens to a lot of companies, they kind of get used to, like I do something well and I kind of stick with it. I don't want to go beyond that. Like I, I've actually had this conversation with the mobile operators in the past where I would kind of go in, it's like, look, I, I know I'm paying you the $50 unlimited data, unlimited everything, you know, unlimited calling, all of that stuff is in there. I, I have extra money I would like to pay you. Can you give me a service that you want to get? And they tried, and, and it's not, it's really not, it's just they're so bogged down with thinking about like how to run the network that they kind of miss the bigger, like the additional services, right? So you can get you know, some really they, cool they, headphones and maybe a little Bluetooth speaker, but that's all you know. Yeah. But I mean, the, substantially, the cost, nothing. Yeah really more yeah. no there's really nothing they can offer you i mean it's like okay a protection plan because that's like the upselling is really a lot of what these a lot of these companies yeah. are always looking for it's like i get you in the door it's just like a car dealer right i get you and want to buy the car right the undercoating the extended warranty and, and yeah. this is like that's a pure money maker for them that's like a money on top of yeah. the profit that they do i mean these guys okay I give them the $50 a month, let's say, and I, I've asked them, I've had this conversation with them. You like, you really have to kind of look for additional revenue streams that you can, you can do this with. And they're looking at that as like, they're looking at private networks as one way of doing it. But the closest I have seen, you know, like the ringtones and like, remember in uh, like 15, 20 years ago, whatever, I was like, Hey, for $2 more, I can do ringtone. Different yeah. I'll give you some others. Yeah. I'm like, and it's not sticky enough right so i mean yeah. that's that's one of the things i mean but they've you know and that's the part they really and, and when your when your revenue is kind of um you know i i pay the 50 bucks and 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 there's nothing else i can make well then you and but my expenditure is still i have to spend a lot of money yeah on the so we have to there's 4g the today they already spent all that money and now with 5g what do they have to do oh they have to spend more because they're spending they need more spectrum um, do they need more cell yeah. sites? They need more cell sites because the frequency that's available to them is, 
you know, laws of physics are the laws of physics, right? So yeah. the, uh, the, the part that people don't get, you know, it's like 700 megahertz doesn't propagate as, you know, or uh, well, propagates much better than the higher frequency, the millimeter wave or something in the gigahertz band, right? So it's essentially rules of thumb in a lot of these uh, technologies. The lower the frequency, the further it goes out. Now that could be an advantage or it could be a disadvantage, right? So, yeah. you know, Capacity. where if I'm covering rural area, well, that's the spectrum I want yeah. because I can cover a larger area. I don't have any capacity problem, but I can't use that spectrum really to sell split. I can't use the 700 in Midtown Manhattan because it no. will just go very far. And I, so you know, same I 50 bucks a month. They're already managing a 4G network. They have to buy a bunch of equipment and deploy it with 5G and they need more locations, which more locations they're paying the venue owner or they're mounting their equipment to a rental fee. They have to get a circuit to- to That call. Yeah, to, so they, those things have to connect to something, right? Yeah. To, to, I, they need a circuit, just like you have one in, in your home. Sounds like a lot of cost. So the, all of this money, and they're not making any more uh, per user per se. I mean, you could argue we've hit a lot of saturation, it hits user saturation in most markets. Um, well, everybody that needs a cell phone already has one, right? I mean, even, I mean, I've seen kids as young as like six years old. Yeah, I lost that battle with my wife. Yeah. They, yeah. We ended up having to be, we ended up being that way, yeah. way earlier than I had uh, preferred to. Yeah. But I was looking at the ads. I was watching TV the other night and uh, it said 5G is is everything I need. Um, and it's, it's oh my gosh, you just can't, I, you know, it, we've can't solved get all the problems. It. It's going gonna, it's gonna to kill world hunger and, and I think that was in there. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I've seen that before as well. Yeah, I, and that's and and that's sometimes it's good and bad. I mean, you want to get people excited over like the newer technology, but at the same time, you could you actually in the danger of overselling it, right? To the like, you know, do I really need it? Did this <laughs> right? happen and with this, 4G? It did happen with 4G. The the thing with 4G though, <laughs> yeah, no, it did happen because it was like you remember the battle between the mobile operators where. You know, where Verizon was on CDMA, which is a different branch of the like the cellular technology, and they needed to transition to for like the LTE, right? LTE. And they did. Well, AT&T and T-Mobile, they were on, on UMTS, right. right? So which is like another branch. Now it's all unified into one, right? Um, and what happened is the, you know, the AT&T and, and T-Mobile basically said, well, 4G is is really more of a more of a, a speed thing. So since we do this um, UMTS plus, which is kind of like we hit 28 meg down in the downlink, um, T-Mobile, right? we'll UMTS. consider that a 4G. So Verizon ended up changing their advertising to basically say it's 4G LTE to kind of emphasize that they're yes. you know they're okay, different. Yeah. But, but I mean, at the end of the day, really the end user, I mean, like, okay, obviously intuitively, even if you ask like a three-year-old is 5G better than, than, uh, than 4G? And their answer is always going to be, well, yeah, there's an extra G there. So yeah, yeah. There's, there's one, two, three, four, I, wait, I have five. That's gotta be yeah. better. Yeah. It's gotta be better than four. So, but again, it's the, the whole thing. I mean, there's cost and all that stuff associated with it. But yeah, and it is improvement, right? It's just the now, it, like we go back, we're always going to have to come back to, look, yeah, I understand. It's all this stuff is great. The, you know, the new car is going to be better than my older, my two-year-old car. But do I really need it? And that's the thing. You have to look at the use case and see, do I, you, when do I need it? When do I need it right now? Do I not? Yeah. So people tuning into this are in the healthcare space, most likely. Um, how is 5G going to help hospitals run better indoors? Yeah, I wouldn't say uh, 5G by itself. I mean, I would say cellular in general gives them an augmentation to what they would get with Wi-Fi today. I mean, there's a, especially in hospitals, I think what they, they a lot of them, what they tend to do is they take Wi-Fi and I mean, and you you have a lot more experience in that area. They just like, well, I have, you know, bad coverage or saturation. I'm just going to add more radios. And I'm like, no, you're making it worse. <laughs> you're Thank just you kind of creating much. more if you don't uh, like anything else. If you just throw in a whole bunch of radios, you're, and especially when they're not coordinated and not like designed correctly, uh, you're actually making the problem worse. 
Um, but in general, I mean, we, we've we kind of talked about the use cases of like, well, I'm trying to do a nurse calling. And and this is where the, the kind of like the Wi-Fi um, contention base uh, architecture becomes more of a problem. You know, in the past, you put people on Wi-Fi on Wi-Fi uh, a calling in the hospital, right, or whatever. A lot of the stuff you're using now, and and the patients kind of got in, got on. You know, they watch whatever TV because you're bored if you're <laughs> if you're laying in yeah. the hospital. Well, now nobody. I don't like I. You know, you bring in an, an iPad and and you're watching Netflix or I mean, because I'm laying here, so I might as well kind of catch up yeah. on my Breaking Bad. 20 seasons of whatever uh, other thing. So now you're you're really more consuming a lot of the Wi-Fi network. And since there is no contention, um, um, like Wi-Fi is kind of like, hey, whoever gets here, I'll serve him. And if you happen to interfere with the other guy, oh, well, tough. If, um, if you don't employ some of the QS mechanisms. And, uh, like, yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Well, and that's the thing. So this is one of the things. If it's, if, if I can give you kind of an LTE or a, or a, uh, or a 4G or a 5G network to kind of, you know, maybe at least get your staff on as well as augment or replace your, your because at some point you're going to have to do something with your DAS, right? Because it's it's running 2G, 3G. 4G. Does the DAS need to be upgraded to support 5G? A hundred percent because the frequency that they use, the radios and all that. So the I mean, meters, you know, so uh, yep. there is a cost. And and this is where we kind of started talking about like the partnership between like the enterprise and 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 the user because and the, and the mobile operator is really kind of the, the at the at the end of the day that's kind of what the mobile operators realized that they need to you know partner with the enterprise and kind of work with them and it and again CBRS made it easier because hey look I'm not asking you to take the spectrum that you just spent billions of dollars on put it in 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 my inside my building now there's spectrum that's being shared with everybody so that eliminates a lot right, so of walk into our building you're going to roam to this band and by the way yeah. it's going to be pretty similar to how you're going to do it everywhere yeah but in the macro network outdoors that's their domain i would argue it is and 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 by the way that the big thing that they're looking at is really more of the user experience what what the last thing you want to do is when the user walks in the building you don't want them to change their behavior. It's like, look, I'm on the call or I'm doing whatever I'm doing when I'm as I walk in the building. You want this experience to be seamless where they don't have to change their behavior. You know, it's like, oh, I got to sign up for this or I got to get off of this and change the way uh, the way I connect. And, and that's usually a deal breaker for a lot of for a lot of people. Right. I mean, you and I might. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go log in, I'll go do this, and you know, you have enough technology, but you can't. I mean, that's that's like less than ten percent of the population would do that. So, what do you do with the ninety percentile of the population that don't want to? I just want it to work seamlessly, right? So, I don't, I don't need to, I don't want to do anything differently. So, it's beneficial for both the hospital because even now, like the whole services, like you, you, you described, like hey, I go to the mall or a shopping someplace. I mean, I that's my payment. That's my. It's actually your phone is doing a lot more than that. I mean, you could have your medical records on there. Yes. <laughs> I mean, just an app, right? Could change yeah. that, that, change your use cases. Yeah. So yeah. we we have a um, couple of customers you know that, that we are working on together, and we've studied these use cases uh, substantially in healthcare. And the reason why you know we had to do it is because nobody had, at least that I could ever get my thumb on. And by working with all the manufacturers like we do, uh, they say, "Hey, we have this really cool new technology. Do you want to buy it?" <laughs> Right, yeah. and we're like, yeah. okay, but yeah, let's understand it. Let's and let's go explore what use cases and what things are hospitals deploying that could be better served on this. What's coming down the road in terms of applications? Tell me about some of the things that that, that we've learned. Sure. Yeah, I mean, and and that's been by the way, that's the you know, like the technology maker is usually it's like, well, I don't know, I made the technology. I have no idea how you're going to use it. And that's a big mistake with a lot of people, what they, in, in, in technology, they end up 
like all the time. just kind of be so looking focused. for the problem later right yeah exactly exactly <laughs> and and this is where you learn a lot it's like okay you can't just go in it's like okay here i have a hammer every you know here's my hammer you know just you can nail everything it was like yeah but I, don't, I need a screwdriver so this is that's the part that um that unfortunately a lot of people in technology kind of miss is the use case and what the application is and and how is this going to improve it and all that so so yeah so that that's really the parts that's missing kind of tying it together this is where you know somebody like a clinical mobility does uh, really well it's kind of like okay well i i know what these what these healthcare uh, providers and 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 organizations kind of their use case i just got to find <laughs> the right technology for them whether it's you, you almost have to be technology agnostic we're saying okay well <clears throat> i can solve 50% of it with wi-fi but there is this like 30% or 40% that <clears throat> yeah okay i you might have try to solve it with Wi-Fi or something else, but you really could be more efficient. You can utilize um, 4G or 5G to help you solve the, the, the problem. And that's what we do. <laughs> and that's what we do well, I, I would say, and help. You know, I, I know what it's like to work for a large healthcare system and you don't have, and we and all of our customers, well, let's say 90% of them are, are healthcare organizations and they don't have the time to be a subject matter no. expert in in any one area and and this is really our area of specialization <laughs> and we don't care if it's yeah. wi-fi or if it's cbrs or not but we we want to understand the problem and to figure out what are the best ways to solve it and let the customer make the decision yeah and that's really the that's the and i i mean like not i mean everybody's been you know it's like somebody's trying to sell you you know, I walk into a car dealership and, you know, it's like I have, uh, you know, my wife and kids or whatever. And the guy's like, oh, here's the, you know, here's the, the what do you call it? The, the so Mustang, you don't need. whatever. And yeah. I'm like, no, dude, I can't. That's not, you see what I have? I can't, I mean, I understand maybe a minivan and SUV is really better fit for me. You should, you kind of almost have to look at it, um, you know, more in, more in that way. And unfortunately, it, a lot of the times like the, you know the the enterprise or the or let, let's focus on the healthcare side i mean they and like you said they can't really sit there and focus on like what's the technology i mean they have applications they want to run and they i mean their you know their day job is is taking up a lot of them they can't just like yeah. go and do a lot of this research so many demands what, what, what innovation time. happening in this technology or the other technology yeah. and you have the other side which is the technology guys like well i have no idea what you do and I don't, and I've never even bothered to even try to understand it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, you know, it's like, what do you mean? You don't have like, I mean, we remember we we've kind of seen some of that stuff where they say, you say 24 seven and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. You, we can, you know, we'll shut down the network between midnight to six in the morning. We can like do maintenance in this. It's like, do you have any, I know 24 by seven is really 24 by seven. This yeah. is like, just imagine your grandmother is like needing, yeah. <laughs> needing attention in, in the, like at two o'clock in the morning. What is like, Oh, the network is down. Sorry. I mean, it's not like an office space where you have the luxury of like, well, everybody left the office at six or seven and I could do whatever until they show up at eight in the morning. Okay. Yeah. That you have a lot of luxury. You can do that with. And this is where you, like a lot of people kind of, especially the, the people who are making the technology, they just kind of like, if you understand what the use case and what these people are looking for, you kind of, you have to solve for that, or at least give them a solution that, that will help them address that use case. Or better yet, to give them a, a, a big picture mobility strategy that, under, that where you understand all of the business needs, use cases, where you're at today, but more importantly, where you're going and to yeah. prepare a, a multi-year plan to help help get there, and and I think it comes down to things like today. So what the reason why I wanted you because you're so deep in this area, and and I've certainly um, you know worked with you long enough, and uh, you know you're my go-to uh, person that anything comes up in 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 these areas, and, and always has been. But I, I, you know there it's a new technology. CBRS is a new technology. Five G is is new. All they see is the darn ads and they have the reps coming into them and say, you know what, Sean, I, I think 5G is going to solve this. I don't know about this Wi-Fi thing. Yeah. I mean, if yeah. I need to keep investing, because by the way, I'm investing a ton of money into it. I get it, but 
I'm hoping that people took away from this. Guess what? 5G is not solving that for you either. No. And if and and there's a million ways I'd like to explain to you why it, it won't be a million, but uh, right. But there's a lot yeah. of ways it won't solve it for you. CBRS, on the other hand, I think is a nice happy medium because the carriers can't deploy 5G in, internally. They don't have the money to do this. You'll find yeah. exceptions, and there'll be yeah. people say, "Say, Sean, you're wrong. You know, I got money from them. Great." Good for you. You got it from one. What about the other two or four? Yeah. Right. It's it it's not sustainable. They're not the what they call ARPU revenue per user. Yeah. It's just it's gone progressively down. And so CBRS is going to be the way where we're going to do neutral host LTE. You know, that's how we're going to roam into buildings. Would you agree or disagree with that? A hundred percent. I mean, this is like because this is the I mean the most cost effective and efficient way for both sides. It's not replacing Wi Fi. No, 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 no. Again, and that's why we started with this. It's like I, I always have to. I mean, and that was, and by the way, that was one of the one of the other advantages of like in in past life when the whole beginning of CBRS, we were part of uh, Ruckus. Ruckus is a big Wi Fi yeah. <laughs> Wi Fi company, right? So I mean, this is why we always have to kind of straddle the line and 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 say, look, it's not replacing it. If Wi Fi solves your problems. And objectively, God it's bless. just not, yeah. right? I mean, it's a different technology. There's different needs for it. But it, from a hospital's yeah. perspective or other enterprises like manufacturing, retail, I mean, I think there's huge value for CBRS yeah. there. But for a hospital, you know, we're taking um, these phones, these smartphones that are really mobile computing platforms. Yeah. Uh, and it's how line of business Applicate. It's where line of business applications are all moving towards. So the EMR applications, how they do bedside medication administration, all of these things, these very specific use cases, they've, they're all being driven down to mobile applications that are running on smartphones. Tablets, generally even speaking, aren't used that often. They are, but it more for you know entertainment for the for the consumer. Maybe a few physician use cases, translation. But this these mobile phones that, and I'm using the word phone in a very mm -hmm. loose way, it's a mobile computing device. Oh, it's it's not a phone. <laughs> it's not a phone. It's actually yeah. a mobile computing yeah. device yeah. that has telephony capabilities. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it, I, th I I believe, and I, and I know you believe this because we're, we're, we've studied this very hard and we've tested these things. Uh, CBRS is a fantastic way to offload those users onto um, off of Wi-Fi, it actually uh, reduces some of your requirements on Wi-Fi and some of the stringency. That it may not, it, you're not probably not going to peel them off, so you, it may not ultimately be able to have much reduction. Could delay a bunch of upgrades if if it's appropriate, but it certainly um, gives the, puts them onto a an access layer technology, which is really what CBRS is. It's an access layer technology. Yeah, where they can directly connect into your hospital without the carrier even being involved. Yeah. And you can yeah, allow I mean, physicians that are offsite often times and then come in with their hospitalists, right? They'll come into the building to round with patients and then leave that transition. They could stay on site the whole time and they'll have the they'll have a fantastic experience. Well, and, and by the way, that was that's exactly, I mean, that's exactly the target for everybody, and especially, I mean, doctors, for as smart as they are, when it comes to technology, a lot of them are not, A, they're not patient <laughs> with yeah. the, like, to do this, and, and it's like, look, I just, like, I want this to work, because at the end of the day, I They have, don't have time to... Yeah, to they, the, the busier they are, yeah. the less the less tolerance toward like something not working um like they're very high like demanding and all this stuff so so again i i think we talked about well, easy there <laughs> well no no i mean i i because i do the same thing i have use like, cases I've, are demanding you mean not the first it, yeah the use case so, not the uh, never say that not, no but you want it to work right i mean you're you're busy i mean you have you have a job to do and it's like okay if i can't make a call or if i can't like really Look yeah, at an X-ray or or do something like that. I, I it's really frustrating for them. It's like, look, I, I only have so many minutes to spend on this, and I don't want to be sitting there debugging and troubleshooting. Um, no, it's just like, yeah, I mean, like you're a busy guy. Let's say you're you're the heck IT teams for and vendors. I, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that's the but and that's the whole idea, right? It's like you want the experience to be seamless. I mean, people got used to this. I mean, they really kind of got yeah. used to like, hey, 
you know, in the past, when you like the whole wireless thing kind of started, you know, you drop calls, whatever. No, people get like, oh my God, what do you mean yeah. I can't have access? Like my kids would flip out because they kind of get used to it. Like grew up with it. They just, they just look at it and say, what do you mean? There is no connection. Like go on a plane and it's like, oh, well, Wi-Fi is down. They're like, what? You know, that's, yeah. it's, that's, it's just how attached and how used to it they people are. And, and again, if you're, if you're trying to maximize somebody's efficient use, especially in healthcare, I mean, again, not being able to be connected, it really could cost somebody a life, right? I mean, because it's not like, okay. Um, in healthcare, absolutely. Yeah. It's, there's no, I mean, sometimes we get, maybe we can blow, people can use this in a manipulative way where they can blow it out of proportion, but Gosh, you know, when it comes to how staff communicates, uh, the Joint Commission did a study, you know, this is repeated by so many people, but around sentinel events, these are bad events that happen basically where there's either a patient passed or maybe had some really, you know, long-term yeah. effects from something, right? And when you, they, the root cause, when they traced it, traced it out, why did this happen? Ultimately, it came down to a breakdown in communications. And it was yep. something like 87% of the time. Yeah, the communications is so darn important, and it, the more that we get accustomed to it, the more we rely on, it. and the and therefore the more strain it is to, I guess the more the higher the requirement is to maintain uh, high availability. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so, the networks are. I mean, like again, the whole idea here is the network. It, they're very sophisticated, and a lot of these technologies are sophisticated. The goal right. is to really make it easy and make it user-friendly and make it like seamless as possible for the end user. Because you can't, I mean, it's such a specialization nowadays. I mean, like the days of generalization of, you know, even I, 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 I mean, because my, my, my daughters are going into schooling and it's like yeah, in college, you know, like it used to be when I was, when I was, uh, when I was going to school, you had like what, four engineering disciplines. I mean, you're either double E, you're either mechanical, yeah. chemical and, and whatever in um, yeah, I was computer civil. science and I had no idea that it was a programming degree. And I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh, right? This and is now you I look at it, I'm like, oh my God, they're so broken down. It, because the level of detail is yeah. so it's like it's such a like a granular thing that you end up dividing. But again, you, you even though that's the case, you know, our job is to kind of make this look and feel easy. It's almost like the dug above water. Exactly right. You know, when you look at it, it looks so elegant and smooth and kind of like floating essentially you look under the water and that thing is paddling like crazy <laughs> yes so it's not the elegant thing it's like it's like flailing it's doing all kinds of stuff to to get you there and that, again that's that's the yeah well, so i want to transition to something that i kind of saved for the end because i thought it'd be i thought it'd be kind of fun and I, I always like to do this at the end where people get to know you a little bit more and learn a little bit more about you but <clears throat> our audience should know that you're a, an army ranger I don't know if that's a R or I think you, <laughs> you are, you always are, right? I, I would say yeah, was uh, directed it yeah. to an R. Tell us about your experience and, and what that means to you. Yeah, well, you have to do that when you're young. It's uh, I grew up uh, in, a, in a military family. So that was kind of a preordained. I went to military schools all my all my life. So I think it uh, it was one of the it was the best experience or in my life or one of the best experiences in my life, um, and it kind of shapes you to the person that you are today. And yes, um, again, it was a lot of fun and a lot of uh, a lot of uh, learning. It's a any, something... any story that's appropriate to tell that's uh, that I think that, mm. that was really memorable from that experience. Oh no, you're uh, the only time to do this is when you're because it's almost like um, uh, an 18 year old a 19 year old whatever thinks differently than a 29 year old actually even a 26 year old yeah you start thinking about it too much oh, at that point you're like well, why would i, I want to do that well yeah yeah i might die <laughs> and, uh, i don't think that was a thought process uh, in my head when i was uh, you know i was in my like late teens early 20s and then you kind of get i was like whoa I was really, I can't believe we did this. Um, uh, yeah, but it's, it's. Um, I certainly would encourage, I, you know, encourage my kids, my nephews and, and nieces to, you know, experience it because I yeah. think it should be, uh, A, it's, it's, it's a service to the country, but at the same time, it's also, um, 
it helps you mature much faster. So when I went to college afterward, um, I was not, <laughs> it was a lot, it was a lot easier to focus. Not that I had a problem with focusing and all like that, but the motivation was always was there. It's, it's almost like roommates. It's like, hey, let's go drink. And I'm like, yeah, I've been there, done that. So, uh, I got work to do. No, no, I got to pay yeah. for school, man. You can't like, actually to the point where my roommate, um, used to kind of complain is like oh you're gonna kill us if we <laughs> like make it i'm like no i gotta study man i can't like unlike you i can't afford a i was a little bit older so because obviously i'm not 18 i'm 21 22 so so you're a little bit um uh little, well, maturity level between that age and that age is is significant oh, it's, it's um, but also at the same time you're just kind of like um a lot of discipline to to you know, we're going to accomplish the mission because you literally kind of get drilled into your head of like, okay, and, and this is where, you know, kind of taking a step back and focusing on what the mission is and what you need to, yeah. what needs to be done is really, um, uh, you know, I, I don't really care what, uh, what you do in the military. It's, it's kind of part of, it just becomes part of what you do. It's like, what's our ultimate goal? It, it, it becomes second nature to you to always ask the question of like uh, you don't get distracted with myopic and and sidetracks and whatever because you at the end of the day you, you you have to kind of figure out what the what the mission is and what you need to do and and it kind of like focus. you do what you need to do to kind of get to that and accomplish the mission so so that's and, and, that, and, that, me, and I will tell you that that definitely influences your work. I mean, you have an incredible work ethic and discipline, and I and I certainly appreciate that. Well, thank you. Uh, there's a story that uh, there's a there's something your dad has always told you about um, about being on time. Uh, how does that go again? Oh God, he was like I think um, I mean it was my dad, but of course I heard it later with uh, what is the the Giants coach? If you're uh, if you're on if you're on time, you're five minutes late. So yes. I, like I heard it afterward, um, and my dad was always on that. It's like, look, the you know we're leaving at this time again. He was a drill sergeant, so it was not it was not that hard to. <laughs> uh, Wait, your dad? Your that. dad was a drill sergeant. My dad was a drill sergeant. Yeah, that's so fantastic. That was, yeah, so that was. I'm one of a large family, so it's. Um, How many brothers? Uh, I have eight brothers and three sisters, so I'm one of twelve. Um, so uh, so yeah so that was part of the uh, and on the younger side too so so you, you you're I, I was in the middle i was i have five older brothers so basically um so like uh, going in the military was not really that much of a stretch it was like a norm i mean it was we went to like military schools i've already dad. learned crawl mcgraw at home i learned that in high school just I, so I used to have to constantly <laughs> fend off um you know that was the it's almost like when you have like <clears throat> just take six puppies or eight puppies or whatever and you know put them together they're you're going to see them constantly fighting and that was <laughs> you know, this is how they pick orders and, and you know they kind of hone in their skills so that was that was the norm so um so younger me not now i don't do that <laughs> um but younger me picking a like somebody else like oh he's bigger than you and i'm like ah screw it i'll take him on <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's still, could it's be still foolish. embedded in your personality of which i've never seen you ever uh the other than a, a gentleman and nice to people right but there, that but that overall mindset is like oh a challenge uh, no, I'll, I'll take, you know, bring it. Yeah, I'll take you. I mean, that was the back down was not an option because that um, even eating was uh, was kind of an interesting thing. <laughs> Sport. So, <laughs> yeah. so, yeah, I mean, you had to like, again, it's the same as you. I mean, the runt of the I mean, if the you know, if you watch like uh, puppies trying to feed, it's like yeah. if you don't fight for it, you kind of don't get it. Yeah, <laughs> so, you don't. get it. Yeah, yeah you, you're not going to you're not going to survive if you don't. So, so yeah, but, but it's all part of like everybody's life is, is uh, kind of like, it's all, it builds you and it kind of gets you to where yeah. you are. So, you know. and, and, you know, to put a perspective on this and we were setting this up this week, you know, we both had pretty busy schedules and the time you proposed was a time, you know, so it was like three o'clock Pacific and you're East coast and here we are. And we scheduled an hour, we're an hour and 40 minutes into this. And, uh, it's a typical, you know, Friday night, right? Yeah, sure. 
<laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that, that could be viewed as foolish, but <laughs> yes. well, no, fine, but I thank you. Those. I mean, I, like I, I really enjoy these, these conversations and I'm, yeah. I'm always excited to, um, to discuss this stuff and share because like learning something and keeping it to yourself is almost like too selfish. Um, you know, if somebody wants to learn, I'm more than happy to kind of share, um, yep. share the experience. And I, mm -hmm. I enjoy guys like you who share the experiences because you're always, always, always learning. Um, and you know, people so. correct you too. And I have no, I have no shame, right? And if somebody knows more than me, they're, they're going to become my best friend, right? And we're going to, you know, go down those roads. That drive no, 100%, 100%. It's, it's like I said, it's uh, the minute you stop learning is the, you know, the minute you're almost ready to, you know, you've given up basically. So, yeah. well, I want to thank you for your time. I don't want to take any more of it away from your family. And uh, thank um, you. I look forward to uh, perhaps more of these. And of course, you know, working these projects or working and doing some great things and uh, uh, for healthcare and beyond, you know, with CBRS and wireless technologies as well. Thank you. Well, thank you.